Okay, so the comment in the paper here was a string of days 60 and 70 degrees. I will be Fahrenheit warmer than normal. So in the North Pole, we've seen incredible variability in temperature. We've seen whole sections of the North Pole being 40 degrees Celsius warmer than normal, multiplied by 1.8, and that's 70 degrees, 72 degrees roughly Fahrenheit, warmer than normal over the North Pole. And that's persisted for months at a time over specific regions, lots, mostly uh, or a lot over the regions that used to have sea ice and no longer have a sea ice covering. Okay, um, so this is context a reader would need to know. Well, you know, readers aren't stupid, okay? Readers can just Google, you know, uh, this. They can Google sea ice temperature. They can Google this exact phrase, 60 to 70 degrees warmer than normal in the North Pole, and they can get data and find out what's going on. So we're in a different world. You don't need to always provide context. Otherwise, you'd be writing forever. You know, you'd have no, I mean, this is a magazine article. It's limited in length, okay? So I, th th these are really non-consequential comments in terms of what the gist of the paper is about. Okay, the doomsday vault leaked. Okay, it's, it's built on permafrost. They thought it would stay frozen. In fact, they have chillers, I think, on the permafrost to ensure that. Well, it rained a lot up there. And water went in, and it was 10 years after it was built. And, okay, design error, construction error, the, the Arctic would warm faster has always been known. What does this statement mean, that the Arctic would warm faster has always been known? Yes, computer models show the Arctic warms faster. But this is a very non-scientific statement. How fast? The Arctic is warming much, much faster than has always been known. So this statement is, is, is incorrect, as is. Okay, it's very misleading. I would, I would have to rate this analysis very, very poorly of this paper. You know, uh, it should, they, these peop, people that are doing this analysis should know better. I, I, you know, to have their names on this too appearing, I'm, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just a slash job. Okay, and I think Michael Mann was even claiming that the doomsday vault wasn't flooded. Okay, I mean, it was flooded months and months and months ago, and it was written in Nor Norwegian that it was flooded, but it didn't get out to the, it wasn't translated and didn't get out to the West for a long period of time. So, is this, uh, okay, so let's see what's going on here. Okay. Does the author really want to suggest scientists expected the permafrost to stay frozen because it's called permafrost? No, I don't think the author intended that at all. Scientists are generally not stupid, agreed, and neither are the public. Although that's more debatable, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, people choose to be stupid, I guess. You know, you can Google and learn stuff. If you have that will to learn stuff and figure out stuff, then, you know, anyway. Uh, um, you know, there's huge amounts of carbon in the permafrost. If that carbon comes out, it will change the planet extremely quickly. Notice, uh, okay, so there's no, notice 34 times, methane's 34 times more powerful than CO2 on a 100 year time scale, 86 times more powerful on a two decade time scale, and on a few decade time scale, over 150 to 200 times more powerful, although that's not mentioned here. Okay, but the, basically, this is a huge problem and this is over understated in this article a lot more can be written on methane and what's happening with the methane in the arctic both on land and on the sea floor so this is really downplaying the threat for methane in this paper okay uh let's see what other comments are here um so this is talking about permafrost degradation and uncertainty, it's a strong feedback process. I don't think you can say this statement. The feedback seems likely to be dominated by carbon dioxide rather than methane. The science doesn't back this up, okay? To get the carbon dioxide, you have to have oxygen present. That happens near the surface. As soon as you go into the sediments, whether they be on the seafloor or on the surface, it's methane because it's anaerobic breakdown. So I have no idea where this statement is coming from. 
Um, it doesn't seem scientific to me at all. Um, you know, and the idea that most of the methane from terrestrial permafrost is from recently photosynthesized carbon, I don't think so. Come on, this is in the Arctic. We don't have a lot of recently photosynthesized carbon. We've got carbon in the sediments, like, like in the seafloor sediments, in the terrestrial sediments, and it's just frozen. And when, when, it, when it thaws, the bacteria breaks it down it, and produces the CO2 or methane, depending on whether it's aerobic or anaerobic. It's not recently photosynthesized, or unless he means recently being like 10,000 years ago compared to millions of years ago. Like there's no, right? So this, sorry, sorry, it just doesn't make sense, this statement. You know, maybe try again. Okay, so let's go back. Let's keep going. Um, need to get this one here, I think. I hope I'm not missing too many things. Okay, we've done that one. This is the one we're doing now. The author's facts about methane are generally accurate, but I don't know why it won't fill in properly here. But he amps up concern about the stuff from the permafrost. And it talks about one paper where it said a lot of, if the methane comes out slow, a lot will be absorbed in the water column and so on. Yes, but if there's big pulses and big bursts, and that won't be the case. You know, ice core evidence is showing, you know, it talks about methane um, be released at different transitions. Uh, measurements of, okay, um, one of the, so there's always the question of, you know, what happened with methane in the previous interglacials? And there's reasons why, uh, you know, it, it's, there, there's a lot of analysis being done on that, okay? But what's happening now is the warming is much, much faster over shorter periods of time. There's no question. So previous interglacials, there could have been slow releases of methane over time, whereas now everything's happening very, very quickly. Okay, so... Uh, let's go back, let's go down even further. I'm having a problem here with the response of my, sometimes this thing doesn't, okay, here we go. Let's see what this comment is. Sometimes the computer's refreshing and stuff. I really want to get this point. Okay, so this is a point that completely surprised me. Um, not all of the carbon, comes out in the form of methane, that's correct. Um, CO2 comes out too. Now this, I can't believe this statement by this writer. The factor of 86 is totally misleading about the impact of methane versus CO2. Okay, go to AR5 IPCC on a 20 year time scale, on a several decade time scale, then it's 86 times. Okay, it's right there. It's, this is well known. This, this number is well known, right? Um, this statement here is totally misleading. Okay, this, is, this needs to be retracted. This is completely misleading. You know, when you attack the paper on specific details, make sure you get your own numbers right. Okay, this is an instantaneous impact. It's not, it's a 20 year impact. Okay, this is a two decade impact. That's not instantaneous. The instantaneous numbers will be more like 150 or 200 times. Okay, uh, so anyway, you know, we, we nix that. Oh, come on, computer. Okay, so uh, what, what is going on here? Okay, so two decades, 86 times. It seems uh, this, this software is not perfect. Okay, so let's see what we get here. There's 10 comments. No, there's three more comments here. So let's have a look here. Hopefully this works a bit better. Okay, and now we got to come back up here. You can do this yourself. This is all online. Okay. <sighs> okay. What? Okay, so we're talking about Antarctica, the Larsen Sea, the crack in the ice shelf growing 11 miles in six. This is just some specific details that are in a story on how quickly climate is changing and how serious it goes. Now he's saying that, you know, talking about it being twice as fast as cherry picking and blah, blah, blah. 
you know, the, the okay, the story was not that is not alarming. If anything, it's good news. It reduces uncertainty. Uncertainty is not our friend, that's for sure. Okay, this is just an article about what's happened with Antarctica recently because it's been in the news. You know, it ties this article to what else is happening in the news. And this is, you know, he's trying to, we've got a scientist trying to do a peer-reviewed statement or, you know, a very, uh, you know, nitpicking, like, like it's very detailed, very, you know, like you're not, you don't peer review an article that comes out in the general public. You talk about the general sense of the article. Does it make sense? Does it not make sense? So I don't, I don't know what the point of that uh, article, uh, that th this criticism is. Okay. Uh, Okay, so here we go. Okay, so this is more talking about dramatic calving of large ice shelves. And we know it's the Antarctic Peninsula has warmed faster than just about any region on the planet in the 90s to, to 2000s. The Arctic took over in the last decade or two, but the, the warming of the atmosphere and the oceans, it's thinning the ice, the, the ice is moving, flowing more quickly. You know, these shelves are all under risk, mostly from the uh, wave action and the temperature of the water. Okay, so calving, you know, we lost, as we were go from north to south on the Antarctic Peninsula, we lost Larson A in 85, 95, we lost Larson B in 2002, now we've lost you know, 12% of Larson C. You know, it's a progression as the uh, whole region is warming. Okay, uh, let's go down and have a look at this. No matter how informed you are, you're surely not alarmed enough. This is quantitatively true and often underappreciated. The likelihood of a worse than expected climate is higher than a better than expected one. Okay, the distribution of outcomes is not symmetrical. Uncertainty is not our friend. Okay, so, so this is a very accurate statement. Uncertainty is not our friend. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay, now there's notice there's, you know, there's, there's okay, there's no criticisms about Hansen here or, you know, what's going on with the levels of greenhouse gases. You know, this is a good point, actually. I really like this point. The smallness, two degrees, two degrees, when Paris doesn't sound like a big amount, right? 1.8 trillion tons, um, the largeness, that's a huge number. What does it really mean? The abstractness, 400 parts per million, that's the methane in the Arctic, right? So the numbers are, you know, people, the public is not, uh, they, the, the numbers don't mean a lot to people, right? Those numbers, those, those aren't common units, like parts per million, these are very small numbers. You know, in, in human, I mean, the temperature changes a lot during the day. So two degrees Celsius doesn't seem a lot. And it's in Celsius too, you know, which loses a lot of the American audience. So that's a really good point. Okay, so um, now what do we get here? Uh, this article is a result of dozens of interviews. You know, there's nothing wrong with this statement. The guy did his research, right? But of course, there's criticisms on this. Let's see what the criticisms are. Okay. A more accurate statement here would be interpret, reflects, for, and so interpret, and interprets. Um, I don't know. I mean, okay. Uh, absent aggressive action or absent action? We're heading into a bad place, absent aggressive action. Okay, uh, what do we mean? Meeting the Paris Agreement, is that aggressive, right? Again, aggressive versus non-aggressive. Aggressive is, uh, we need a World War II mobilization. This is an aggressive action. Paris, I would argue, is just, uh, you know, it's just tapping at the edges, right? What aggressive action makes a huge difference? Yeah, perhaps this should have been elaborated on. Um, okay, is there anything else there? I think that's good. I wish this would work a bit quicker. It feels like it's very lethargic and slow here. Okay, so as we continue down, 